Wow, thank you. <clears throat> uh, just wanted to start off obviously thanking all of the people that are here speaking to you today. They're all committed to everything that we know we should be committed to. I want to thank Tina, of course, but really I'm looking out into this audience here of people, and these are the people that get it and understand it. And I say that because I always wanted to be the person who got it and understood it, and I thought I was. And I definitely got it, but I didn't really understand it until I met Tina Peterson. That's when I understood where I needed to be with what I thought I got. So how did I meet Tina? I was on the board of the Downtown Neighborhood Association in Rhode Island Pride, and I see Tina at some of the events, and I see Tina speaking before some of us about accessibility, and I go up to her, and she's so shy that, you know, it's really hard to get to know her, and immediately that was it. I knew that I had a lot in front of me that was going to happen for me to help me get it. Why I say that, too, is, um, I had Tina do a roll through with me, as we lovingly refer to, roll through through my business in Providence first. <clears throat> now I have to, as a liquor license holder, I have to have fire inspections and building inspections and health inspections. And I never feared anything more than my roll through inspection. <laughs> But why is that? It's because the other inspections were instilled and ingrained in me. They were expected of me. So I knew that there was no room here to not understand what needed to be done. And I think that's what we need to try to do when it comes to accessibility. Instill it and ingrain it and inspect it. Expect it to be done. And if we do that, we'll get the same results we get. There's no getting around your inspections to open your business and get your license. They'll help you, and they'll help you to achieve it. But really, this is where we need to head. So what I did was, uh, as Congressman Landrin said, I had some adjustments to make to my existing business. And we know that businesses are challenged by the building structure you have. There's only so much you can do, even if you have the heart and the resources to do it. So we make the adapted amounts we can. But then we have an opportunity every now and then to build from scratch. And that's where we can do it right. So when we opened another location in Massachusetts, I turned to Tina and I said, could you help me do this right? And she did. I'm proud to say that she did a roll through there, and I'm as close to getting it and understanding it as I ever could have been. So what I want to say to my fellow business owners <laughs> out there is I understand both sides of this. I understand there's a heavy financial cost. But the heavy financial cost really comes not only from your checkbook, but from your heart. You don't have to see the immediate return to know the return exists. If you are a business owner with a vision, you know, as Tina pointed out, there is a market out there that you're not marketing to. You know they're going to come because someone greater than me said, if you build it, they will come. So we've built it, and they're coming, and I'm going to try to be better and help as much as I can with my fellow business owners understand that this is something we all must be instilled and ingrained and inspected to do. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I knew I was going to, f I knew I was going to forget this. Ten times I was told, I have to introduce the next person. This is the steel yard person, a really important person here. <laughs> And it's lovingly now, I was going to call it Howard, was his name, but it's Howie. Schneider? Correct? Okay, close enough. Thanks, everyone.